Hello. Well, now this is the brows. And also it's the center lip. And the uh, axis to the brows is like 91 millimeters. You could probably do it with 90. But it also needs to have nylon nuts. Now all these servos are in the position where everything's forward as far as the moving mechanism of the servo. And when I say forward, it's towards the eyes and the mouth, all the, uh, towards all the mechanisms. I do have two washers that are in this so-called axis of the brow movements. And you got your, you know, your eyebrows and your center brows. And I just place these washers, you know, sandwich them in between the whole axis itself. But as soon as you have this servo centered with no servo horn on it, center it and then place your servo horn in the right position with your mechanism and then you can place your set screw through the so-called servo horn. But, you know, putting this in the same axis and it just gives the, the illusion of moving the center brow and the eyebrows itself but it could be like the bridge of the nose or it's like an alien creature and this is how i have the linkage placed on this brow and as you see i have it laying on this tab here and then it goes and then the servo arm lays on the linkage you know in 3d design a cad you know you you kind of can build it on the cad and kind of know how you're going to lay all the positions of the linkages but it's it's, just, it's it's a fun process to lay these washers you know I, I'll just you know paint a little glue stick on these areas that the washer's going to lay and just kind of tack weld it's, it doesn't hold metal that well and it's just something that you know I don't have to fumble around and trying to get this to thread through and the washer comes out and it just helps just be able to slide all this in position and this is kind of a balancing act you know where you don't want to move it just you just pretty much thread this 91 millimeter rod straight through both moving brows without trying to I guess unstick the the washers you know out of you have the the jaw mouth lip mechanism and then you have the eyelid mechanism or the eyelid plate but this so-called brow scalpel I would think is probably the easiest of, of the three when you're putting this whole animatronic eight servo head together you have the brow mech the mouth mech and then you have the eyelid mech you take it and there's the space in between the eyelids and you have to thread that linkage through that space and it can get kind of you know tedious just to thread this through but the way I've been doing it is I just take the the blink mech and just kind of wiggle that so-called uh, linkage in place and it just do it like so you, you know you have all the wires that are working against you also but as soon as you get that all lined up then you can put the brow mech on because all this is connected with the eight screws these are three millimeter screws and you have six that are 20 millimeters long and you have two that are 12 millimeters long and the short ones are underneath the eyelid area. You know, having eight servos in this animatronic, it's kind of a tight fit, and then you're dealing with the wires and things like that. And you kind of just like design things to get it to, you know, fit correctly and save space. But there is some a few things I wish I would have done as far as adding more movements to this animatronic, but more movements would be more servos. And then you just get where it just becomes tighter and tighter. But this is the hardest part right here. 
is put in these small 12 millimeter screws right here in this area underneath the eyelids but it's just you know you just grab you a, a some tweezers and just place it in that hole and the camera angle is kind of hard to get to because you know I have to see it and it's it is a small you know this is about the size of a you know a softball but just to just to find this so-called hole and get the camera angle right so you can see it right here but it worked out good and these two screws underneath the eyelids are the length is 12 millimeters and they are three millimeter screws and just uh, all eight should be having their nylon nuts but these uh, neodymium magnets here on the top that holds the skull in place and when I place these neodymium magnets in this socket I'll place it into the socket and I'll make a mark and that way the opposing magnet will be in the right position because it's going to be kind of reversed in a way you don't want to kind of mess it up because you might have your your skull lid popping off instead of being attached now this part here is you're just threading the five servo wires through the bottom plate that way you'll have all eight servo wires dangling from the bottom of the head now I'm gonna make some mold boxes for the teeth because I want to create these teeth or turn them into dental acrylic and kind of make creature dentures but what I do here is, is I make me a mold box and it's like a five millimeter frame all the way around it and give it some space for the silicone to pour and you know as far as the height so it's going to probably be close to nine millimeters height above it but just give enough space for some silicone to go in there now I am going to be molding the resin from resin print of these teeth and this can be kind of a, a negative of, this, of resin printing. Yeah, we're going to use dental acrylic and it's going to be a to where I mold tooth acrylic and gum acrylic or the pink. It's all going to be done in a quick cure and it's uh, be polished with a dental aid and we're going to have some realistic creature teeth. To me, this is a big negative about 3d printing where you have difficult molding silicone and resin they just don't like each other and but what I do is I let them just kind of sit out and degas for about five six days and then I'll come back and spray Krylon crystal clear about three coats I guess and it's just a big negative uh, of the world of resin printing you know resin printing and I mean, printing in general is great for artists but in resin printing it was you know the super detail of resin was so beautiful and great but it really started flooding the market with these smaller printers and they wouldn't laser they were done with the screens but it was mainly because of the world of dentistry and it was uh, the introduction of having 3d printed dentures instead of the old 50-year process but uh it's it's pretty amazing on how they you know eliminate certain processes with the world of 3d printing but here's these mold boxes and they'll just snap in place and they'll hold silicone pretty well but I'll put a, like a some scotch tape all the way around it to make sure it don't leak before I pour the silicone but hope y'all like thanks for all the subscribers and thumbs up later